Hello, my name is Riva Quiroga and I am a PhD candidate in linguistics based in Chile. I'm an editor at Programming Historian, the world's flagship multilingual source for learning and teaching digital research methods in the humanities. I'm also a trustee of Proxys Limited, the charity registered in England and Wales that administers Programming Historian financial activities. The joy of research and programming made me want to pursue a PhD, and here I am, currently in my fourth year. My research focuses on understanding language and social change by using computational methods to analyze an historical corpus of political speeches from Chile. A key component of my project is creating a tool for other researchers from the humanities and social sciences to explore and exploit the corpus I'm building. For that to be possible, Principles such as software sustainability are fundamental. My interest in programming motivated me to get certified as a carpentry instructor and an art studio trainer, and in getting involved with programming communities. I am one of the co-founders and chairs of Latin R, the Latin American Art Conference, and I organize the Art Ladies chapter in Santiago de Chile, the second biggest worldwide. I have also been involved in efforts for making programming resources accessible for non-English speakers. I led the community project that translated the book R for Data Science into Spanish. And I'm the maintainer of the R packets that translates the datasets used in the book. Let's go back to Programming Historian as my fellowship plans are related to this initiative. I first got involved in the project in 2018. Thanks to a grant from the British Academy, the Programming Historian team organized a workshop in Bogotá, Colombia, that brought together people from different parts of Latin America to develop original content in Spanish for the publication. I got so interested in the project that I applied to be an editor. In my past two and a half years, I've been trying to contribute not only to the growth of the Spanish publication and community, but also promoting good practices such as software citation, and creating tools that facilitate our editorial workflow. As a trustee of Practice Limited, I led the design of the lesson maintenance workflow that is helping us solve issues related to the sustainability of our lessons and the code and tools used in them. My experience as an editor and a trustee has made me aware of the areas in which programming historian can better serve its community. Currently, if you want to learn about a tool or gain a new skill, you can explore the lesson list, search by keyword or by topic. But what if you are a humanities researcher that wants to improve your software skills? Where should you start? What if you want to get familiar with practices that will ensure the sustainability of the code and data of your research? Which lessons should you follow and in which order? What if you just, just finish your graduate program and want to become a research software engineer in digital humanities? Where to begin? What we're currently missing are paths, learning paths, that can help readers to navigate our collection of tutorials. To that end, my project contemplates three steps. Running a series of workshops that will inspire the design of learning paths that will make visible the need of writing new lessons. The plan is to run at least three online workshops, an introduction to digital methods, one about reproducible research, and one about RSE. In this first part of the project, I want to target the Spanish-speaking community. Why? Well, English speakers have more access to workshops about these topics. And also because this will be a great opportunity to spread the world about reproducibility and RSE to the Spanish-speaking humanities community of practice. Planning and running those workshops will help us design at least of three possible learning paths. We will be able to better decide which lessons currently published by Programming Historian will help better to achieve those goals and in which order. But they will also show us which areas we need to cover with new lessons. And that is the third step. What if you need a reproducible environment for your code? Maybe a lesson about using Binder could be a good addition to the collection. Or what if you want to share your research data as an R package or a Shiny app? Maybe a tutorial about those topics could be useful. 
So in this third part of the project, the plan is to create new content for the site to cover the gaps detected in previous steps. The funding of the fellowship will be used to retribute speakers and trainers of the workshops and authors and translations of new lessons that will be requested. Why support this project? Programming Historian receives around 8,000 visitors per month from almost all over the globe. This means that this project can not only impact the digital humanities research community in the UK, but can effectively reach underserved regions and countries around the world.